All right. Our first question is <sighs> from More Jojo. What type of lifter do you think is having the easiest time adjusting to at home workouts? Oh, that's a good question. It is. That's so a Jojo, that's baby. a fun one to speculate. It on. is because I've had so I've seen several questions that are similar to this. Like, who do you think is having a better time? Bodybuilder, powerlifter, CrossFit. Yeah, CrossFitter. So like, I think that you have to, I think you first have to. We have to separate the what we're like. What do you mean by easiest time? Right, either mentally or physically. Right. So I think mm. uh, if you're a bodybuilder or a powerlifter, I think they they go into this with an advantage. Right. You probably have a lot of muscle mass on you, so you can afford to lose some of it. Right. So you probably go in with the greatest advantage. But then I would be. I would say that they probably are the hardest mentally right now. They're probably freaking out and having the hardest time not having I their gym. I feel like crossfitters are having the hardest time because they can't, like, you <laughs> yeah. know, oh, of course. That's tell so- all their friends, dude, I totally did it in like, <laughs> under five minutes. Where are you? Nobody gives a shit. You're right. You're at home by yourself. <laughs> I think, I, okay, I agree with you. I think crossfitters are probably struggling the most. That thing is such a community driven <laughs> uh, sport. That's a good point. totally murfed, uh, you know, like in 4.9. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. You're you know, right. You're you know, right. I that saw- is having the hardest. Time. I saw a meme that cracked me up. It said that uh, power lifters don't even know that there's a shutdown. They just they're still resting between <laughs> sets. One hundred percent, dude. That's yeah. so accurate. Uh, you know. Cool. Okay, so here's the type of lifter that I think is going to have the easiest time. The one that uh, does the best job of accepting the circumstances. That's the truth. So right, what, right. whether you're a bodybuilder, a power lifter, uh, Olympic lifter, CrossFitter, you know, whatever, the person who is you know has is is having the the easiest time accepting the circumstances and transitioning to other forms of exercise. I would like to think that's a mind pump listener. I, I would like so. to think if you've been with us for a really yeah. long time, we've made the case for no matter what modality you gravitate towards, that there's tons of value in learning to move in and out of all types of modalities. Yep. And here, this is just a forced reason for you to transition right now, right? We've all now- Got to be adaptable. Our, gym, our gyms are shut down. And even if you weren't a big fan of body weight type of training- you're like, well, I, you know, I've been telling myself I need to transition. That mind pump's been telling me for a long time that I should transition out of my, you know, powerlifting or bodybuilding phase that I love to go back to all the time. This now makes a great excuse for me to do that. And the people that I think that are reframing the situation as an opportune time for them to work on either body weight or mobility type of training and are seizing that. I think are for sure having the best time in this situation. I completely agree. And I think, look, if you are if you were somebody that was so in love with your form of training that you never moved out of it, first off, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with really enjoying a modality and you really don't want to veer out of it. So you power lift, you always power lift. Or you're a bodybuilder, you always bodybuild or whatever. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. But remember this one fact right here. Remember that novelty gets the body to respond. It just does. I don't care what type of training that you do, Mm -hmm. switching things up can oftentimes cause some pretty positive changes to your body. So now you have this, this, you're forced into a little bit of novelty. Now, is your max squat numbers going to go down and your max deadlift numbers going to go down because you're doing body weight stuff? Yes, but you may increase your stability. You may have significant improvements in your mobility and remember this muscle, uh, you know, muscle memory is a real thing. Just because you're not, you know, lifting the way you always do, but you're still staying active. You go back to the gym when things finally open up, and you go back to the gym. Not only will you see your uh, whatever you were doing before, you'll get back to it very quickly. But because now you've added a new element to your training, like maybe mobility, for example, you may surpass some of your previous uh, plateaus. Like I know. I know for a fact, I'll give you a great example. Here's a good example. I love heavy compound barbell movements. I love squats, deadlifts, overhead presses, rows, you know, uh, bench presses. Those are my favorite exercises. I love training in low reps. And for a long time, I trained to see how how much I could possibly lift. Well, at one point, I had to face the reality that uh, pushing any further was causing me pain. I had SI joint pain in my low back. I had you know, some, some issues with my left to right balance. So what I did is I dedicated some time to unilateral training. Now that means that my weight went way down. So instead of squatting with three or 350 pounds, I'm doing, you know, controlled lunges with a hundred pounds on my back. But I did this for a few months. I dedicated unilateral training for about a few months. Then when I went back to my favorite form of exercise, yes, it did take me a few weeks to get back to the previous strength that I had, but then I went past it. 
I went past yeah. my old plateaus. So you have to reframe. So the lifter that that looks at this, it looks at everything and accepts it and says, okay, I can't go to the gym. What can I do? And you know what? The same fervor and passion that I had towards the way that I trained before, I'm going to apply that to this other form of exercise. Mobility is a great example. And mobility will benefit 99% of those of you listening uh, are going to benefit from really, really good mobility training. As a bodybuilder, you'll have better controlled ranges of motion, which are going to give you better muscle growth and better pumps. As a power lifter, reduce risk of injury. And because your weak links are not going to be as weak as they were before, you're probably not going to hit the same rev limiter that you hit before. So it's, this could be a very good thing. Mm. Well, minus all, you know, the lack of machines, I feel like bodybuilders are going to be, you know, in the best mm. situation because you I mean you can walk around in your bikini briefs. <laughs> you know where the best lighting is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you that's just go in front of a mirror and do your fucking thing. <laughs> I can't. Like, you're great. You're, like, it's it's powerful. It's yeah. great. I, I, I think about, like, power lifters doing, like, reps, you know, body weight yeah. stuff. Like, oh, my God, it's 15 reps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it's too much just hurling. No, this is this is a mindset thing, you know. One hundred percent. You know, yeah. part of what uh, the okay. So for years we we we've been familiar with you know corrective exercise and mobility and you know uh, foam rolling and all these tools to help improve uh, range of motion and stuff, right? And work on your dysfunction. Well, it wasn't until I reframed my goals and said, okay, I'm going to really take this seriously where my entire focus was around mobility. Did I see the like huge change? So I had a lot of people that have messaged me about like, oh man, how did you get that depth in your squad? And how did you, you know, I've been trying to work on the combat stretch and I feel like my ankle mobility, it'll never be there. I'm, I'm Mark Bell. I know tagged, I was tagged in one of his posts recently mm. where he doesn't think he could ever get down into a ass to grass squad. Just people, you start to believe that you're just, your structure won't allow you to get there. And it's not true. It's just, you probably have never put the same effort towards mobility as you have powerlifting. And guarantee mm -hmm. if somebody like our buddy Mark actually applied all all the mobility drills the same way that he has put effort towards his powerlifting because he's an incredible powerlifter. If you just switch that to like all like you totally like said, I don't care about powerlifting now. All I care about yep. is becoming the most mobile guy. He would become extremely mobile, and it it it, it required me to do that after mm -hmm. bodybuilding. And I went from being all I cared about is how I look and the pump and building up more muscle, more muscle, more muscle to, okay, I have to completely shut that off. That's not a priority right now. It doesn't mean that I don't want muscle. It doesn't mean that I don't want to not lose muscle. It just means that I don't care about it. It's not my focus. My focus is what I'm measuring my success week over week is, am I gaining a greater range of motion? Am I getting better at these mobility drills? And so this is a great time for people to reframe their goals and put a lot of energy and effort on an area like Sal said that 99% of you will benefit greatly from. Yeah, and one of the big challenges I know is that people who are, you know, gym fanatics don't really know. They might have figured out how to program a workout for themselves in the gym because they've been doing it for so long. They don't know how to program a workout without equipment. Yeah. This is very this would this would have been me you know, years ago, if you, if this happened to me at the age of, you know, 20 and I didn't have a gym, I'd be like, okay, push ups, pull ups, uh, body weight squats. Like, all right, what else do I do? I don't know what else right. to do. I wouldn't know about, you know, tension uh, positions. I wouldn't know about mobility. I wouldn't know about all the different angles that you can use with just body weight, how to slow reps down, how to make them feel more intense. I wouldn't know how to, how to utilize bands and I wouldn't know how to program it all together because my experience was in the gym. So if, if you need programming, if you need a good workout that's well put together, we've decided to continue the half off sale of maps anywhere because uh, you know they've extended the stay at home orders. Gyms are closed longer than we thought. Initially, we thought we would just put it on sale for uh, you know the month of March, but we're going to keep it on sale. So if you need a program like that, you, there, the code is. Uh, white and then the number 50 without a space. Uh, follow that. That's good workout programming. All you need are bands and a broomstick.